All right, hey, Shalom. First and foremost, I'm giving all praise and glory unto Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Rakakwadash. Double honors unto the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone that do rule exceptionally well. And also, Shalom. Citations, mercy, and blessings to all the sincere brothers that's out there pushing this word with truth and with faith. My name is Tabwa Ahmad of Great Millstone Northwest. Um, I want to start off uh, this lesson with uh, this scripture that I read over just a little bit ago that sparked me to um, put, put a little something together. This is uh, Proverbs chapter 21, uh, verse 27. Okay. And it says, The sacrifice of the wicked is abomination. How much more when he bringeth it with the wicked mind? All right. Which when I read that, I thought, man, that's that's pretty heavy. All right. Uh, for for a single scripture, that's that's pretty heavy. All right. Because it, it actually um, it speaks volumes as far as why um, you have the works of groups like the Great Millstone. And then you got the works of uh, these other groups. And you can see uh, you can see a very big difference in in um, how much the Most High have parted understanding. You know, you can see a very big difference from from it. And the reason why is because uh, the sacrifice that's given by Great Millstone is uh, one that's acceptable. All right. And you have these other groups. You have these people that's out there and they're bringing forth a sacrifice with a wicked mind. All right. So the most high is seeing it and count it as abomination and not count it as a um, as a, a work of love, a, a work that's um, uh, to be rewarded with uh, uh, with the riches of understanding, you know, um, uh, speaking of sacrifice, this reminds me of the scripture that tells us that we should present our body as a living sacrifice. What's that? Romans, the 12th chapter. Um, let's grab that real fast. Uh, just to show that our sacrifice now is, is by doing this work. Okay. Our sacrifice now is by doing this work. This is Romans chapter 12, verse one. I beseech you, brethren, I'm sorry, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of the Most High Power, Yahweh, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto the Most High, which is your reasonable service. So the way we sacrifice unto the Heavenly Father now is with our bodies being a living sacrifice, i.e., when we go to the altar, which is when we go to those street corners, all right? When we go out there to actually preach and teach to the people, that's us presenting our bodies as a living sacrifice. And our sacrifice, it has to be acceptable to the Heavenly Father. All right. It needs to be acceptable unto the Heavenly Father. And the way it's going to be acceptable is that you're rightly dividing uh, the word and truth. All right. Not spreading forth lies. Man, if you're not teaching people about that RFID microchip. Then you're spreading forth lies, man. If you're not teaching Israel about who they are correctly, then you're spreading forth lies. If you're not speaking on how the so-called white man is is uh, biblically Edom, which is the devil according to the Bible, all right, and that all the works that they have been doing is not going to last. They're going to be punished for it. If you're not telling the people about that, then you're spreading forth lies, man. We're supposed to be out there as a, a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable. All right. And, uh, acceptable sacrifice isn't one that's uh, incorrect. All right. If you want an example on that, you can look at um, you can go to the book of Genesis and look at Cain and Abel. All right. Abel gave forth a, 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 a acceptable sacrifice, but Cain did not. All right. And we know how that story turned out. You know, um, I want to jump to the Apocrypha so we can uh, uh, read some scriptures there. Let's go to the book of. Uh, Let's go to the book of Sirach. It's called Ecclesiasticus in the Apocrypha. All right. We commonly refer to it as Sirach. Sirach, the second chapter, starting at the top. It says, my son, if thou come to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation. You got guys that's not out there uh, preparing themselves for temptation, man. All right. Meaning they're not building a defense towards uh, that temptation with their mind. They're not. They're not. Their mind is, is weak. All right, that great temptation that's going to come is the RFID microchip. But there's a lot of other temptations that's that's out there. And you got guys falling victim to those temptations, man. You're supposed to prepare thyself for temptation. Set thy heart aright and constantly endure and make not haste in the time of trouble. All right. That's this. This is this is something um, if we've come to serve the Lord, this is something that we would actually be uh, 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 actually meditating on, actually putting action behind. OK, Um 
the fact that there's temptations that's going to come and we're not supposed to be making haste in a time of trouble. It says, cleave unto him and depart not away that thou mayest be increased at thy, la at thy last end. All right. Because you got, like the scripture said, you got some that are wicked out there and their mind ain't right, man. Your, if your mind ain't right, if your mind's not towards your how about shim y'all shy, if you're, if you're faking the funk, all right, if you're half-assing, all right, you're lukewarm, you don't really want to, uh, uh, you don't really want to come in, in the servitude of your how about shim y'all shy, hey, that's all fine and dandy, man. If you don't want to do this work, that's fine. Get your hand far away from that plow, though, man, and let somebody step into that position that does want to work. All right. Ain't no ain't no reason to have people out there in the field if y'all ain't if y'all ain't uh, plowing on the field, man. Most high, uh, uh well, actually, the scriptures say that that we need laborers, man. We're supposed to pray that there's more laborers because the harvest is plenteous, but the laborers are few. So we need actual laborers, man. We don't need nobody out there wanting to take a break every five minutes. Nah, we need somebody that's ready to ready to, to get this dirt moved, man. All right. That's ready to till this land so we can plant. All right. Hey, it, it's it's some hard work that got to be required sometimes, man. When really it's it's not a hard work. And every anybody that understands this truth understands that it's not a hard work. Sometimes, yeah, it's tiresome. Sometimes it, 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 it's 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 weary. But all in all, man, this this profession, this work, this labor of love is a light thing, man. That's why Yahweh Shai said, "My my burden is light." Uh, how does how was it uh, paraphrased? Uh, my yoke is heavier, but my burden is light. Some something of that sort. Salakia for uh, butchering that. Um, but I'm sure the brothers that are are aware of that scripture, you know exactly what I'm talking about. All right. Hey, that hey, this 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 work that we're in. You can't be half-assing, man. You can't be uh, uh, straddling and dragging. All right. If you, if you, if all you, if all you got in you is just a little bit, that's fine. Give forth all of that, man. Just like the parable of the woman that cast forth the penny into the treasures. What did Yahweh Shai say about her? He said that she, uh, she was better than them that had great riches. The reason why is because she gave forth everything she had, man. She gave forth everything she had. Meanwhile, the the, the guys that, that were rich only gave forth the 10%. And hey, we're not looking for somebody that can only give 10%, man. We're looking for somebody that can give forth everything. Well, I should actually say that Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai is looking for somebody that's willing to give everything rather than just the 10%, man. Because this work requires more than that. All right? With all, with all the work that needs to get done in the edification and the uh, waking up of the elect... Hey, dude, it needs to be more than just just the 10 percent, you know, of course, I'm speaking to myself first and foremost and, and then also uh, uh, to whoever may listen. All right. Um, I'm actually going to I'm going to hold that right there and I'm going to jump to uh, Wisdom of Solomon because I don't really want to make this lesson too long. Although there's there's a lot of great points that could be made. This is Wisdom of Solomon. I'm going to go to the first chapter of this. I'm sorry. I went to two. I want one. We'll start at the top here. It says, love righteousness that ye be, uh, ye that, I'm sorry, I'm going to restart that. It says, love righteousness, ye that be judges of the earth. Think of the Lord with a good heart and in simplicity of heart, seek him. All right. So that's that. Again, this is a commandment. This is something that's being told unto us uh, that that it would behoove you to actually follow. All right. And to put action behind. All right, because it's, it's really it's a simple thing to serve the Heavenly Father, man. He's already told you everything that you should and shouldn't do. All right. <laughs> hey, the foundation's already been laid. The path's already been paved. All you got to do is walk it, man. One foot in front of the other. You know, that's that's it. He's already set up. He's already set up men uh, to be able to break down the things that are hard. All right. They, they're able to, to take the, the cow as it is and break it into chunks of meat. That is digestible, man. All right. There's somebody that's already there to do that. You got these guys that's out there trying to <laughs> trying to pave their own way, man. They want to go after the big buffalo and don't don't even know how to skin it. Don't even know how to skin it. But they want to go after the big buffalo, man. Don't know how to hunt. But uh, uh, they want to split off and think that they can survive on their own, you know. And, and, and it really, it doesn't make sense, man, because this is actually a simple thing. In simplicity of heart, you're supposed to be seeking the Heavenly Father, man. All right? He'll put it on the spirit of the men that's supposed to go and, and do the, the heavy lifting. All right? 
which he already has through the spirit. That's that's the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. All right. He's already put it on them uh, to, to do the heavy lifting. You all you got to do is sit back and learn, man. Sit back and eat this good old meal, man. It's already been cooked and everything. All you got to do is sit back and, and take your plate. You know, it says for he will for he will be fond of them that tempt him not and show himself unto such as do not distrust him. And that's basically what you got out there. You got people that's distrusting the Heavenly Father. That's the reason why uh, uh, these guys are doing the things they do. The, the scoffers, the scorners, the ones that are straight up pushing lies all just to be in opposition to the apostles and the elders, which is madness, which is madness when you think about it. Because they're supposed to be working for their salvation. And yet the only thing they're doing is, is trying to purposely come up against great millstone at every opportunity knowing knowing in their spirit that what's being taught is true by the apostles and the elders but because they have that pride they they have to say something that is um uh that is against what's being taught by great millstone which again that's madness man all right it says for froward thoughts separate from the heavenly father in his power when it is tried reprove the unwise for unto a malicious soul wisdom shall not enter, nor dwell in a body that is subject unto sin. So, again, uh, what we read in Proverbs, um, the 21st chapter, verse 27, which said that uh, the, the sacrifice of the wicked is an abomination. All right. The sacrifice of the wicked is an abomination. And how much more if he does it with a wicked mind? Hey, this this is all ringing true, man. The, the wisdom is not going to be with that malicious soul, man. All right. It's it's not going to be it's not going to she's not going to come and sup with that, that that body that's absolutely subject to sin, which the sin that's being is being subject to is that these people are coming with a um, a wicked mind thinking that they can serve the heavenly father when that's not the case. Hey, but pretty much that was the point. Again, I don't want to make this too long. Uh, but Lord willing, that was edifying. Lord willing, the message was received. Again, the praise and the glory. It goes unto Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai by Hashem, Rakak uh, Double honors unto the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone uh, that do real exceptionally well, constantly feeding the flock. And Shalom, citations, mercy, and blessings to you, sincere brothers out there pushing this truth with, with uh, faith. All right. Until next time, I'm going to say Shalom.